Well, the good news is I got Fuznuts' test results back, and he seems to be perfectly healthy. So he's just being an asshole to Buddha because, well, he's an asshole. This book is a little bit of Christian missionary propaganda. And he perhaps is based upon a well-known literary figure, or perhaps even a historical figure. Now, Didymus is simply the Greek word for twin. Uh, it's also used as the Greek word for testicles, for obvious reasons. There are usually two of them. She kissed them. Your fruit shall be without root, and your shoots shall be dried up like a branch scorched by a strong wind. How many of you find, how many of you find this child Jesus an adorable, little, cute little baby? <laughs> Nobody? Good. <laughs> I sprinkled my body with the bath water that his mother had used to wash him off. And in that instant, I was healed. Greetings, fellow worker slaves, podcasting at 128 kilobits from the Fortress of Squalitude, located not far from the redneck Mecca in the frozen wasteland that is currently Tennessee. This is the Atheist in the Trailer Park podcast. I'm your host, Tucker. Professor Fuzznuts is wandering around here somewhere. Ash, Buddha, and Lord Squeakington are in my room. Yes, it's a podcast hosted by a guy and his cats. Get over it. And uh, this is um, a another episode in the Acts of Thomas with Skullbeard. I really hope we get through with this shit soon. Um, and I'm sure all of you do as well. Uh, and let's see. Our next episode will be a new show episode. I haven't checked to see if Hertzie will be able to join me or not, but I think she will. Um, so let's talk about what all has been going on around here. Um, I was out sick from work two days last week, so that was fun, and I don't have paid sick time. Well, I could use my vacation days for it, but uh, kind of wanting to hang on to them. And uh, I am with the precipitous drop in temperatures. I mean, right now we're in the I think the high today is supposed to be 21 degrees. That's Fahrenheit. I don't know what that would be for you folks in the civilized world, but uh, I think you get the idea. It's pretty cold. And I am so glad I have that kerosene heater. Because, as you might recall, I have been able to jerry-rig, more or less, the uh, heat pump. But it's a all-or-nothing thing. It won't turn on and off on its own. It, I can turn it on, and it'll run. Um... But I have to manually shut it off when, you know, it gets comfortable in here. Well, it is so cold, and that unit is not designed for this weather, that it can't keep the place warm. Um, I mean, it doesn't get freezing in here or anything like that, but I ran the kerosene heater uh, this morning to warm the whole house up and I got the temperature up to uh, 80 degrees in here before I shut it off because, you know, I likes me warm when it's cold outside. And then, you know, then uh, I ran out of kerosene, so I didn't feel like going out this morning and getting more, so I was just waiting until it you know, un until it got warmer in the day before I walked down to the gas station to get kerosene. And so when it dropped to mm, 70 here, I turned the heat on. And yes, heat was coming out of the vents, but it wasn't hot enough to keep the temperature from falling. Um, by the time I got around to getting kerosene, uh, it had fallen three or four degrees in here. And, you know, the unit was just running and putting out hot air, but it just can't put out air hot enough to warm this place up when it's so cold outside. Um, so I 
you know, I went and got more kerosene and filled the thing up, and it's running now, and it's getting toasty in here. I really hate to see what my electric bill is going to look like next month, because um, it's going to be a bad one, I'm sure. Uh, I did my taxes, however, so uh, I should be getting my refund about the time the electric bills do, and well, hopefully it doesn't take my whole refund, but um, the refund is big enough that it'll more than cover the largest electric bill I've gotten here to date, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, I would like to be able to use it for some things, um, but, you know, who knows. And, uh, yeah, I cannot make a partial payment on my uh, electric bill. Um, they, they don't care. <laughs> I mean, if it doesn't... It, it doesn't even matter what the temperature is outside. They, uh, if your bill isn't paid in full by the end of the month, um, you are fucked. They will, uh, they will pull it. And they will pull your meter. Um, and then it's three hundred dollars to get it turned back on, plus whatever it costs for your, you know, you to pay your bill, and you have to uh, um, wait for them to come out and rehook you. So, that's just some bullshit. Now, the fun thing is, is I went to work yesterday, and basically there was hardly anybody there. I mean, Mondays are normally a skeleton crew anyways, but we had even fewer there. And before the end of the day, they were like, guys, we're not coming in tomorrow. They just decided, you know, that the road conditions were too bad, which, I mean, granted, it was only about two inches of snow and ice, and if, you know, they were uh, prepared, and they had people who properly understood how to deal with this shit, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be an issue at all. Um, but we don't, so they're not. I mean, the roads today... The main roads are clear because I had to go out and pick up a few things. Um, so I walked to the store. Uh, I, I discovered uh, yesterday that I can't use my Razor scooter on ice, snow and ice, because I set it, you know, down on the road and went to move, and it didn't. <laughs> It just sank into the snow and nearly tipped me over. Um, so I've been walking everywhere. Not no big deal, of course. Uh, but it was uh, so when I went down to the store. Uh, the uh, a lot of places were closed. Uh, not, not surprising, but the main road was wasn't bad at all. I mean, it was uh, wet and slushy, but. It was mostly clear. I mean, obviously, there could be some black ice on it, but uh, it, they didn't look that bad to me. And uh, I certainly didn't slip on any ice when I was walking on the road. I did when I was walking on the side of the road because uh, and there's no sidewalk, so I have to walk on grass, and I was going down a slope and slipped a little. And it's a nice thing about wearing a backpack. That's what I fell on. Um, and I managed not to crush the stuff I had in my backpack. And I didn't get hurt, so that's the important thing. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, it's... Uh, it's cold. I'm supposed to go into work tomorrow, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and yes, for those of you wondering, I have a 600-watt halogen light underneath the trailer. Uh, so the feral kitties have a warm place to stay and my pipes don't freeze again. So they're, And they've got plenty of food out there, so they're, they're fine. Um, and they all, uh, they all tend to get along, as long, provided they're not fighting over the food dish, but they'll curl up with one another out and about. So they've got a you know, warm place to stay and they can curl up with one another. Um, 
anything else here well I think that's about everything so uh, as much as I'm sure we all hate to let's get to more of skull beard and eye reading from the acts of Thomas something happens in this one I don't remember what but something happens so, Acts of Thomas 74, and that wild ass went in, <clears throat> a great multitude being with him, and said, Unto you I speak, the enemies, enemies of Jesus that is called Christ. Unto you I speak, that shut your eyes, lest ye see the light. Unto you I speak, children of Gehenna and of destruction, of them that seeth ceaseth not from evil until now, that always reneweth his workings in the things that befit his being. Unto you I speak most shameless that shall perish by your own hands. And what I shall say of your destruction and end, and what I shall tell, I know not. Guy doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. For there are many things and innumerable to the hearing, and greater are your doings than the torment that is reserved for you. Um, is this from the Syrian? However great your bodies, they are too small for your retributions. Okay. But unto thee I speak, devil, and to thy son that followeth with thee, for now am I sent against you, and wherefore should I make many words concerning your nature and root? Leave my root out of this. <laughs> Which yourselves know and are not ashamed. But Judas Thomas, the apostle of Christ Jesus, saith unto you, He that by much love and affection is sent hither, before all this multitude that standeth here, come forth <coughs> and tell me of what race ye are. Oh, so this is a racist text. Awesome. Well, they, they all are. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. And straight away the girl came forth with her daughter, both like dead persons and dishonored in aspect. And the apostle beholding them was grieved especially for the girl, and saith unto the devils, God forbid that for you there should be sparing or propitiation, for ye know not to spare nor to have pity. But in the name of Jesus, depart from them and stand by their side. And when the apostle had so said, the women fell down and became as dead, for they neither had breath nor uttered speech. But the devil answered with a loud voice and said, Art thou come hither again, thou that deridest our nature and race? Art thou come again that blottest out our devices? And as I take it, thou wouldst not suffer us to be upon the earth at all. But this, at this time, thou canst not accomplish. And the apostle guessed that this devil was he that had been driven out from that other woman. Come again? No, it's just mustard. <laughs> <laughs> and the devil said, I beseech thee, give me leave to depart, even whither thou wilt, and dwell there, and take commandment from thee, and I will not fear the ruler that hath authority over me. For like as thou art come to preach good tidings, so I also am come to destroy, and like as if thou fulfill not the will of him that sent thee, he will bring punishment upon thy head, so I also, if I do not the will of him that sent me, before the season and time appointed, shall be sent unto mine own nature. And like as thy Christ helpeth thee in that thou doest, so also my Father helpeth me in that I do. And like as for thee he prepareth vessels worthy of thine inhabiting, so also for me he seeketh out vessels whereby I may accomplish his deeds. And like as he nourishes Sith and provideth for his subjects, so also for me he prepareth chastisements and torments with them that become my dwelling places, uh, those in whom I dwell. And like as for a recompense of thy working, he giveth the eternal life, so also unto me he giveth for a reward of my works eternal destruction. And like as thou art refreshed by thy prayer and thy good works and spiritual thanksgiving, so I also 
am refreshed by murders and adulteries and sacrifices made with wine upon altars. Uh, sacrifices and libations of wine. Oh, so they're going to do... Yeah. Do a little drinking. And like as thou convertest men unto eternal life, so I also pervert them that obey me unto eternal destruction and torment, and thou receivest thine own, and I mine. And if I'm not mistaken, oh, that was two sentences with a shit ton of semicolons. And, yeah. And, like, who the fuck writes this shit? And when the devil had said these things, and yet more, the apostles said, Jesus commandeth thee, and thy son by me, to enter no more into the habitation of man. But go ye forth, and depart, and dwell, wholly, and wholly apart from the habitation of men. And the devil said unto him, Thou hast laid on us a harsh commandment, but what wilt thou do unto them that are now concealed from thee? For they that have wrought all the images rejoice in them more than thee. And many of them do the more part worship and perform their will, sacrificing to them and bringing them food by libations and by wine and water and offering with oblations. And the apostle said, Thou also shall now be abolished with their works. And suddenly the devils vanished away. But the women lay cast upon the earth as if were dead and without speech. And the wild asses stood together and parted not one from another. Ooh, the parting of the asses. But he to whom speech was given by the power of the Lord, while all men kept silence and looked to see what they would do, the wild ass said unto the apostle, Oh, now they're talking about their ass again. Yeah. Awesome. Why standest thou idle, O apostle of the Christ the Most High, who lookest that who looketh that thou shouldst ask of him the best of learning? Wherefore then tarriest thou that thou shouldst ask him and he would give thee? Why delayest thou, good disciple? For lo thy teacher desireth to show by thy hands his mighty works. Why standest thou still, O herald of the hidden one? For thy Lord willeth to manifest through thee his unspeakable things, which he reserveth for them that are worthy of him to hear them. Why restest thou, O doer of mighty works in the name of the Lord? For thy Lord encourageth thee and engendereth, thee, engendereth boldness in thee. Fear not, therefore, for he will not forsake the soul that belongeth unto thee by birth. Begin, therefore, to call upon him, and he will readily hearken to thee. What the fuck are they doing up there? And it, uh, Why standest thou marveling at all his acts and his workings? For these are small things which he hath shown by thy means. And what wilt thou tell concerning his great gifts? For thou wilt not be sufficient to declare them. And why marvelest thou at his cures of the body which he worketh? Uh, especially when thou knowest that healing of his which is secure and lasting, which he bringeth forth by his own nature. And why lookest thou unto this temporal life and hast no thought of that which is eternal, uh, when thou canst every day think on that which is eternal. Hmm. All right, so lean not on your own understanding and just believe whatever the fuck we tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, that's a novel message. Yep. But unto you, the multitudes that stand by and look to see these that are cast down, raised up. I say, believe in the Apostle of Jesus Christ. Believe the Teacher of Truth. Believe him that showeth you the truth. Believe Jesus. Believe on the Christ that was born, that the born may live by his life, who also was raised up through infancy, that perfection that might appear by his manhood. And that was all one sentence. He did teach his own disciples, for he is the Teacher of Truth, and maketh wise men wise. Oh, I'm going to skip that. 
interpolation, who also offered the gift in the temple that he might show that all the off, all the every offering was sanctified? Ah, that makes no sense. This is his apostle, the shewer forth of truth. This is he that performeth the will of him that sent him. But there shall come false apostles and prophets of lawlessness, whose end shall be according to their deeds, preaching indeed and ordaining to flee from ungodliness, but themselves at all times detected in sins, clad indeed with sheep's clothing, but within ravening wolves, who suffice not themselves with one wife, but corrupt many women, who, saying that they despise children, destroy many children, boys, oh, so obviously they don't care if the girls get killed, for whom they will pay the penalty, that content not themselves with their own possessions, but desire that all useless things should minister unto them only, professing to be his disciples, and with their mouth they utter one thing, but in their heart they think another, charging other men to be aware of evil, but they themselves perform naught that is good, who are accustomed to temperate and charge other men to abstain from fornication and theft and covetousness. But in all these things do they themselves walk secretly, teaching other men not to do them. So, the Catholic what? Church. Mm! Being a fucking hypocrites. And when the wild ass had declared all these things, all men gazed upon him. And when he ceased, the apostle said, <laughs> What I shall think concerning thy beauty, O Jesu, and what I shall tell of thee, I know not, or rather I am not able, for I have no power to declare it, O Christ that art in rest, and only wise that only knowest the inward of the heart and understandest the thought. Glory be to thee, merciful and tranquil, glory to thee, wise word, glory to thy compassion that was born unto us, glory to thy mercy that was spread out over us, glory to thy greatness that was made small for us, glory to thy most high kingship that was humbled for us, glory to thy might which was enfeebled for us, hmm. glory to thy godhead, oh, it's been a while since I've had godhead, <laughs> glory to thy godhead, that for us was seen in likeness of men, and glory to thy manhood that died for us, <clears throat> uh, that it might make us live. Glory to thy resurrection from the dead, for thereby rising and rest cometh unto our souls. Glory and praise, good report, to thine ascending into the heavens, for thereby thou hast shewed us the path of the height, and promise that we shall sit with thee on thy right hand, and thee judge the twelve tribes of Israel. <clears throat> thou art the heavenly word of the Father, thou art the hidden light of the understanding, sure of the way of truth, driver away of darkness, and blotter out of error. Okay. Yeah. You really need, uh, like, a copywriter or an editor or some shit. Yeah, I know. Having thus spoken, the apostles stood over the women, saying, My Lord and my God, I am not divided from thee, or doubt not concerning thee, nor as one unbelieving do I call upon thee, who art always our helper and succorer and raiser up, who breathest thine own power into us and encouragest us and givest confidence and love unto thine own servants. I beseech thee, let these souls be healed and rise up and become such as they were before they were smitten of the devils. And when he thus spake, the woman turned and sat up. And the apostle bade the captain and his servants should take them and bring them within and give them food, for they had not eaten for many days. And when they were gone in, the apostle said unto the wild asses, follow me. And they went after him until he had brought them without the gate. And when they had gone out, he said to them, depart in peace under your pastures. The wild, ass or the wild asses therefore went away willingly. And the apostles stood and took heed to them, lest they should be hurt of any, until they had gone 
afar off, and were no more seen. And the apostle returned with the multitude into the house of the captain. So were these ladies dead? Am I correct that the women were dead? And then they just sat up and then they sent the asses away? They were demonically possessed and then appeared to die. And then uh, the asses got sent away. And oh. y- yet there was no reassurance that nothing, no harm would ever come to the asses. Um, which is strange because they were so Hot helpful. If you're going to drive out demons. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to drive out demons, you got to drive them into pigs and then drive them off a cliff. Yeah. Isn't that how it works? I don't know. Yeah. And you got to wonder why there were pigs running around there since they couldn't eat pork. Well, you know, reasons. Yeah. I mean, um, then- <laughs> in, you know, Afghanistan has one pig in the whole country. And it's really? in a zoo. And they, uh, well, it's probably dead now considering how long ago I heard the story. Um, but they, uh, they have one pig in the zoo and... You know, they had to get like special dispensation to put it in there and you know it's sort of like going to a horror movie for people there to see the thing they're all terrified of it that's it's not a very nice pig but he's a big pig yeah yeah all right the ninth act of the wife of charisius now it chanced that a certain woman, the wife of Chirisius, that was next unto the king, whose name was Migdonia, uh, came to see and behold the new name and... What? Came to see and behold the new name and the new god who was being pro- proclaimed and the new apostle who had come to visit their country. And she was carried by her own servants, and because of the great crowd and the narrow way that they were not able to bring her near unto him, and she sent unto her husband to send her more to minister to her, and they came and approached her, pressing upon the people and beating them. <coughs> Kinky? Mm-hmm. The apostle saw it and said to them, Wherefore overthrow ye them that come to hear the word and are eager for it, and ye desire to be near me, but are afar off? As it was said of the multitude that came unto the Lord, having eyes ye see not, and having ears ye hear not. And he said to the multitudes, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear, and come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And a pearl necklace. (laughs) That! Shit, no, that wasn't part of the text, never mind. And looking upon them that carried her, he said unto them, This blessing and this admonition, here and elsewhere, there is a marked divergence between the texts of you and P., the Roman and Paris manuscripts. Bonnet prints them separately. P is on the whole much shorter. Syrian differs from both. I follow you, but it is very corrupt. Oh, boy. Which was promised unto them is for you that there are heavily burdened now. Ye are they that carry burdens grievous to be born and are borne about by her command. And though ye are men... They lay you on loads, they lay on you loads as brute as on brute beasts, for they have that authority over you. Think that ye are not men such as themselves, whether bond or free, for neither shall possessions profit the rich, nor poverty save the poor from judgment. Nor have we received a commandment which we were, which we are not able to perform. Nor hath he laid on us burdens grievous to be borne which we are not able to carry, nor building which men build, nor to hew stones and prepare houses, as your craftsmen do by their own knowledge. But this commandment we have received of the Lord, that that which pleaseth not us when it is done by another for this we should not do to any other man. Yeah, okay, sure, whatever. Yeah. Abstain, therefore, first from adultery, for this is the beginning of all evils. <laughs> of course it is. And next from theft, which enticed Judas Iscariot and brought him unto hanging, and from covetousness, 
For as many as yield unto covetousness see not that which they do, and from vainglory and from all foul deeds, especially them of the body, whereby cometh eternal condemnation, for this is the chief city of all evils, and likewise it bringeth them that hold their heads high unto ter- tyranny, and draweth them down unto the deep, and subdueth them under its hands, that they see not what they do, wherefore the things done of them are hidden from them. Hmm. That's very strange. Yeah. But I think the take-home message is no pain, that's bad. God says But do ye become well-pleasing unto God in all good things, in meekness and quietness? For these doth God spare, and granteth eternal life, and setteth death at naught. And in gentleness, which followeth on all good things, and overcometh all enemies, and alone receiveth the crown of victory, with gentleness, and stretching out of the hand to the poor, and supplying the want of the needy, and distributing to them that are in necessity. Hmm, sounds like from each according to their ability, to each according to their need. Especially Fucking Marxists. Yeah, especially them that walk in holiness. Okay, that's a problem. For this is chosen before God and leadeth unto eternal life. For this is before God the chief city of all good. For they that strive not in the course of Christ shall not obtain holiness. And holiness did appear from God doing away fornication, overthrowing the enemy well pleasing unto God. For she is an invincible champion. Wait, God's a woman? Having honor, okay. Having honor from God, glorified of many, she is an ambassador of peace, announcing peace. If any gain her, he abideth without care, pleasing the Lord, expecting the time of redemption, for she doeth nothing amiss, but giveth life and rest and joy unto all that gain her. I'd like to meet this lady. Yeah. Uh, no, baby, I'm not sure. She'll bring you to your knees, though, with her six-inch tongue. Yeah. Oh, four-inch tongue. We'll bring a six-foot man to his knees, apparently, if applied correctly. <clears throat> but meekness hath overcome death and brought him under authority. Meekness hath enslaved the enemy. Meekness is the good yoke. Meekness feareth not and opposeth not the many. Meekness is peace and joy and exaltation of rest. Abide ye therefore in holiness and receive freedom from me. And be near unto meekness, for in these three heads is portrayed the Christ whom I proclaim unto you. Holiness is the temple of Christ, and he that dwelleth in her... (laughs) Getteth her for an habitation, because for forty days and forty nights he fasted, tasting nothing, and he that keepeth her shall dwell in her as on a mountain. Okay. And meekness is his boast, for he said unto Peter, our fellow apostle, Turn back thy sword and put it again into the sheath thereof. For if I had willed so to do, could I not have brought more than twelve legions of angels from my father? I think somebody wants to sheat their sword. Yeah. Yeah. And when the apostle had said these things in the hearing of all the multitude, they trod and pressed upon one another. And the wife of Carisius The king's kingsman leapt out of her chair and cast herself on the earth before the apostle and caught his feet and besought and said, O disciple of the living God, thou art come into a desert country, for we live in the desert, being like to brute beasts in our conversation. But now shall we be saved by thy hands. I beseech thee, therefore, take thought of me and pray for me that the compassion of the God whom thou preachest may come upon me, and I may become his dwelling place and be joined in prayer and hope and faith in him. 
And I also may receive the seal and become an holy temple, and he may dwell in me. Yeah, she wants the D. Mm -hmm. And the apostle said, I do pray and entreat for you all, brethren, that believe on the Lord, and for you, sisters, that hope in Christ, that in all of you the word of God may tabernacle, huh? and have his tabernacle therein. For we have no power over them, because you're, ye are given power over your own souls. And he began to say unto the woman, Mignonia, Rise up from the earth and compose thyself. Take off thine ornaments. Be mindful of yourself. For this attire that is put on shall not profit thee, nor the beauty of thy body, nor thine apparel, neither yet the fame of thy rank, nor the authority of this world for the polluted intercourse with thine husband shall avail thee if thou art be bereaved of the true fellowship for the appearance fantasy of ornamenting cometh to naught and the body waxeth old and changeth and raiment weareth out and authority and lordship pass away probably corrupted uh, passeth away accompanied with punishment according as each person hath conducted himself in it. And the fellowship of procreation also passeth away, and as it were condemnation, Jesus only abideth ever, and they that hope in him. Thus he spake and said unto the woman, Depart in peace, and the Lord shall make thee worthy of his own mysteries." And she said, I fear to go away, lest thou forsake me and depart unto another nation. But the apostle said to her, Even if I go, I shall not leave thee alone. But Jesus of his companion will be with thee. And she fell down and did him reverence and departed unto her house. Huh. I'd like it if she'd fall down and do reverence unto me. Hmm. Now, Teresa, the kinsman of... Misdeus the king bathed himself and returned and laid him down to dine. But I thought Cheresis was the wife. And I'm confused. No, it's the king. It's Mygdonia is the wife, I think. I don't know. I mean, and, and he inquired concerning his wife where she was, for she had not come out of her own chamber to meet him as she was wont. And her handmaid said to him, She is not well. And he quickly entered into the chamber and found her lying on the bed and veiled. And he unveiled her and kissed her, saying, Wherefore art thou sorrowful today? And she said, I am not well. And he said unto her, Wherefore then didst thou not keep the guise of thy freedom and remain in thy house, but didst go and listen unto vain speeches and look upon works of sorcery but rise up and dine with me for i cannot dine without thee but she said to him today i decline it for i am greatly afeard and when charisius heard this of mygdonia he would not go forth to dinner <clears throat> but bade his servants bring her to dine with him when then they brought it in, he desired her to dine with him, but she excused herself. Since then she would not. He dined alone, saying unto her, On thine account I refuse to dine with Misdeus the king, and thou wast not, and thou wast thou not willing to dine with me? But she said, It is because I am not well. Charisius therefore rose up, as he was wont, and would sleep with her. But she said, Did I not tell thee that for today I refused it? So I guess she's got a headache now. Yeah. When he heard that, he went to another bed and slept. And awaking out of sleep, he said, My lady, my Gadonia, my, 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 my Gadonia, hearken to the dream which I have seen. I saw myself fly at meat near to Medesius, Medesius the king, and a dish of all sorts was set before us, and I saw an eagle come down from heaven, 
and carry off from before me and the king two partridges, which he set against his heart, and he came over us and flew about above us, and the king bade a bow to be brought to him. And the eagle again caught away from before us a pigeon and a dove, and the king shot an arrow at him, and it passed through him from one side to the other and hurt him not. And he, being unscathed, rose up in his own into his own nest, and I awoke, and I am full of fear and sore vexed, because I had tasted of the partridge, and he suffered me not to put it in to my mouth again. And my... Macedonia said unto him, Thy dream is good, for thou every day eatest partridges, but this eagle had not tasted of a partridge until now. <clears throat> Meaning she's got a side dude. Okay. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I was going to comment that uh, dude clearly missed the fucking eagle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but whatever. Oh, I shot right through it. <laughs> but it was. And when it was morning, Chirisius went and dressed himself and shod his right foot with his left shoe, and he stopped and said to Magdonia, What then is this matter? For look the dream in this action of mine. But Magdonia said to him, And this also is not evil, but seemeth to me very good. For from an unlucky act there will be change unto the better. And he washed his hands and went to salute Mizdeus the king. So, put your shoes on the wrong feet. Yeah. Because reasons. And likewise, Mygdonia rose up early and went to salute Judas Thomas the Apostle. And she found him discoursing with the captain and all the multitude. And he was advising them and speaking of the woman which had received the Lord in her soul. Bow, chicka, wow, wow. Whose wife she was. And the captain said, She is the wife of... Charisius, the kinsman of Medeus the king, and he, her husband is a hard man, and in everything that he saith to the king he obeyeth him, and he will not suffer her to continue in this mind which she hath promised, for oftentimes hath he praised her before the king, saying that there is none other like her in love. All things, therefore, that thou speakest unto her are strange unto her. And the apostle said, If verily and surely the Lord hath risen upon her soul, and she hath received this seed that was cast on her, she will have no care of this temporal life, nor fear death, neither will Cheresius be able to harm her at all. For greater is he whom she hath received into her soul, if she hath received him indeed. Okay, so, um, looks like she's got nothing to worry about. Um, Lasted. And Mygdonia, hearing this, said unto the apostle, In truth, my lord, I have received the seed of thy words, and I will bear fruit like unto such seed. Oh, she's pregnant. The apostle saith, Our souls give praise and thanks unto thee, O lord, for they are thine. Our bodies give thanks unto thee, which thou hast accounted worthy to become the dwelling place of thy heavenly gift. And he said also to them that stood by, Blessed are the holy whose souls have never condemned them, for they have gained them and are not divided against themselves. Blessed are the spirits of the pure, and they that have received the heavenly crown of the world which hath been appointed them blessed are the bodies of the holy for they have been made worthy to become temples of god that christ may dwell in them blessed are ye for ye have power to forgive sins blessed are ye if ye lose not that which is committed unto you but rejoicing and departing bear it away with you blessed are ye the holy for unto you it is given to ask and receive Blessed are ye meek, for you hath God counted worthy to become heirs of the heavenly kingdom. Blessed are ye meek, for ye are they that have overcome the enemy. Blessed are ye... Oh, uh, God, this... I have jumped a line somewhere. Um, 
Blessed are ye, meek, for you, God, hath counted worthy, worthy to become heirs of the heavenly kingdom. Blessed are ye, meek, for ye are they that have overcome the enemy. Blessed are ye, meek, for ye shall see the face of the Lord. Blessed are ye that hunger for the Lord's sake. Or should that be sake? For you, for, for you is rest laid up, and your souls rejoice from henceforth. Blessed are ye that are quiet, for ye have been counted worthy to be set free from sin and from the exchange of clean and unclean beasts. And when the apostles had said these things in the hearing of all the multitude, Macedonia was, more, was the more confirmed in the faith and glory and greatness of Christ. But Carisius, the kinsman and friend of Misdeus the king, came to his breakfast and found not his wife in the house, and he inquired of all that were in his house, Whither is your mistress gone? And one of them answered and said, She is gone unto that stranger. <laughs> She's gone aside. And when he heard this of his servant, he was wroth with the other servants, because they had not straightway told him what was done. And he sat down and waited for her. And when it was evening, and she was come into his house, he said to her, Where wast thou? And she answered and said, With the physician. And he said, Is that stranger a physician? And she said, Yea, he is a physician of souls, for most physicians do heal bodies that are dissolved, but he souls that are not destroyed. Carisius, hearing this, was very angry in his mind with Mygdonia because of the apostle, but he answered her nothing, for he was afraid, for she of him both in wealth and birth, but he departed to dinner, and she went into her chamber, and he said to the servants, call her to dinner, but she would not come. <clears throat> Dude's got to work on his technique, I think. Yep. And when he heard that she would not come out of her chamber, he went in and said to her, Wherefore wilt thou not dine with me, and perchance not sleep with me, as the wont is? Yea, concerning this I have the greater suspicion, for I have heard that that sorcerer and deceiver teacheth that a man should not live with his wife, and that which nature requireth, and the god hath or head hath ordained, he overthroweth. When Cheresius said these things, Mygdonia kept silence. He saith to her again, My lady and consort Mygdonia, be not led astray by deceitful and vain words, nor by the works of sorcery, which I have heard that this man performeth in the name of the fa of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yeah, because that was a big thing in India at the time. For it was never ye... For it was never yet heard in the world that any raised the dead. Oh, wow, that is totally not true. Almost every religion has that myth. And, as I hear, it is reported of this man that he raiseth dead men. And for that he neither eateth nor drinketh. Think not that for righteousness sake he eateth, neither eateth nor drinketh. But this he doth because he possesseth not. For what should he do? which hath not even his daily bread. Uh, okay, whatever. And he hath one garment because he is poor. And as for his not receiving aught of any, he doth so, to be sure, because he knoweth in himself that he doth not verily heal any man. Yeah, okay, sure, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Makes no sense to me. Yeah. Gobbledygook. And when Carisius so said, Macedonia was silent as any stone, but she prayed, asking when it should be day, that she might go to the Apostle of Christ. And he withdrew from her and went to dinner heavy in mind, for he thought to sleep with her according to the wont. And when he was gone out, she bowed her knees and prayed, saying, Lord God and Master, Merciful Father, Savior Christ, do thou give me strength to overcome the shamelessness of Carisius, and grant me to keep the holiness wherein thou delightest. <clears throat> That's not what they're calling it these days. That I may also be, oh, that I may also by it find eternal life. 
And when she had, she had so prayed, she laid herself on her bed and veiled herself. Tiresias, having dined, came upon her, and she cried out, saying, Thou hast no more any room by me, for my Lord Jesus is greater than thou, who is with me and resteth in me. And he laughed and said, Well dost thou mock, saying this of that sorcerer, and well dost thou deride him, who saith, Yet have ye have no life with God unless ye purify yourselves. And when he had so said, he essayed to sleep with her. But she endured it not, and cried out bitterly, and said, I call upon thee, Lord Jesus, forsake me not, for with thee I have I made my refuge. For when I learned that thou art he that seekest out them, that are veiled in ignorance, and savest them, that are held in error, and now I entreat thee, whose report I have heard and believed, come thou to my help and save me from the shamelessness of Jerusalem, that his foulness may not get the upper hand of me. And she smote her hands together, and fled from him naked. And as she went forth, she pulled down the curtain of the bedchamber, and wrapped it about her, and went to her nurse, and slept there with her. <clears throat> Good night, nurse. Mm -hmm. But Jerusalem was in heaviness all night, and smote his face with his hands, and he, and he was minded to go that very hour, and tell the king concerning the violence that was done him. But he considered with himself, saying, <clears throat> If the great heaviness which is upon me compelleth me to go now unto the king, who will bring me into him, for I know that my abuse hath overthrown me, from my high looks and my vainglory and majesty, and hath cast me down into this vileness and separated my sister Magdonia from me. Yea, if the king himself stood before the doors at this hour, I could not have gone out and answered him. But I will wait until dawn, and I know that whatsoever I ask of the king, he granteth it to me, and I will tell him of the madness of this stranger how that it tyrannously casteth down the great and illustrious into the depth, for it is not this that mm. grieveth me, that I am deprived her of her companying, but for her am I grieved, because her greatness of soul is humbled, being an honorable lady in whom none of her house ever found fault. She hath fled away naked, running out of her own bedchamber, and I know not whither she is gone. But it may be that she is gone mad by the means of that sorcerer, and in her madness hath gone forth into the marketplace to seek him, for there is nothing that appealeth unto her lovable except him and the things that are spoken by him. And so saving, he began to lament or maybe it should be, and so saying, he began to lament and say, Woe unto me, O my consort, and to thee besides, for I am too quickly bereaved of thee. Woe is me, my most dear one, for thou excellest all my race. Neither son nor daughter have I had of thee, that I might find rest in them. Neither hast thou yet dwelt with me a full year, and an evil eye hath caught thee from me. Would that the violence of death had taken thee, and I should have yet reckoned myself among kings and nobles, but that I should suffer this at the hands of a stranger, and be like he is a slave that hath run away to mine ill fortune and the sorrow of mine unhappy soul. Let there be no impediment for me until I destroy him and avenge this night, and I may not be well pleasing before Miss. Miss Misdeus the king, if he avenge me not with the head of this stranger. And I will also tell him of Sifor the captain, who hath been the occasion of this. For by his means did the stranger appear here, and lodgeth at his house, and many there be that go out, that go in and come out, whom he teacheth a new doctrine, saying that none can live if he quit not all his substance and become a renouncer like himself, and he striveth to make Many partakers with him. 
And as Tiresias thought on these things, the day dawned, and after the night, he put on a mean habit and shot himself, and went downcast and in heaviness to salute the king. And when the king saw him, he said, Wherefore art thou sour? Eh, wherefore art thou sorrowful, and comest in such garb? And I see that thy countenance is changed. And Tiresias said unto the king, I have a new thing to tell thee, and a new desolation which Sephora hath brought into India. Even a certain Hebrew, a sorcerer, whom he hath sitting in his house, and who departeth not from him, and many are there that go in to him, whom also he teacheth of a new god, and layeth on them new laws, yet oh, such as never yet were heard, saying, it is impossible for you to enter into that eternal life which I proclaim unto you, unless ye rid, your, rid you of your wives, and likewise the wives of their husband. And it chanced that mine unlucky wife also went to him, and became a hearer of his words, and she believed them. And in the night she forsook me, and ran unto the stranger. But send thou for both Sephora and that sorcerer that is hid with him. <laughs> that is hid within him mm. and visit it on their head <clears throat> lest all that are of our nation perish so what are you saying there dude yeah and when Miss Deus his friend heard this he saith to him be not grieved nor heavy for I will sin for him and avenge thee and thou shalt have thy wife again and the others that I cannot, the, and the others that cannot, I will avenge. And the king went forth and sat on the judgment seat. And when he was set, he commanded Sipher the captain to be called. They went therefore unto his house and found him sitting on the right hand of the apostle and Mygdonia at his feet, hearkening to him with all the multitude. And they were sent from the king and they that were sent from the king said unto Sipher, Sittest thou here listening in two vain words? And Mizdeus the king in his wrath thinketh to, thinketh to destroy thee because of this sorcerer and deceiver whom thou hast brought into his house? And Sipher hearing it was cast out, not because of the king's threat against him, but for the apostle, because the king was disposed contrary to him. And he said to the apostle, I am grieved concerning thee, for I told thee at the first that that woman is the wife of Jerises, the king's friend and kinsman, and he will not suffer her to perform that she hath promised, and all that he asketh of the king he granteth him. But the apostles said unto Cipher, Fear nothing, but believe in Jesus that pleadeth for us all, for unto his refuge are we gathered together. And Cipher, hearing that, put his garment about him and went unto Mysteus the king. So, dude's sitting there naked? Those parties, eh? Yeah. Everybody throw your keys in the bowl. <laughs> and the apostle inquired of Mygdonia, What was the cause that thy husband was wroth with thee and devised this against us? And she said, because I gave not myself up unto his corruption, destruction, for he desired last night to subdue me, subdue me, and subject me unto that passion which he serveth. And he to whom I have committed my soul delivered me out of his hands, and I fled away from him naked and slept with my nurse. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I read that in a magazine once. Mm-hmm. Uh, that which befell him I know not, wherefore he hath contrived this. The apostle saith, These things will not hurt us, but believe thou on Jesus, and he shall overthrow the wrath of Tiresias, and his madness and his pulse, and he shall be a companion unto thee in the fearful way, and shall guide thee into his kingdom, and shall bring thee unto eternal life, giving thee that confidence which passed passeth not away nor changeth uh -huh. <laughs> um what that's 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 enough i gotta somebody is 
too heavy on me right now. Somebody is very insistent that you pay attention, human. Yeah, yeah. That's it for this episode of the Atheist in the Trailer Park podcast. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, as well as just about anywhere else podcasts can be found. Many of the episodes are also on YouTube. Follow the show on Twitter. At TParkAtheist is the show's Twitter handle. It's on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash trailerparkatheist.com. If you happen to like the podcast, please rate it on iTunes. If you'd like to support the podcast, there's a donate button on the show notes page. You can support it via Patreon at patreon.com forward slash TN Tucker. Thanks for listening. Say goodnight, Fuzznuts. All I know is this violates every canon of respectable broadcasting. Damned cat.